Tonight, industry players in the aviation sector across Africa are currently gathered in Toulouse, France to launch a white paper on the continent's air transport sector. Currently, about 27 African countries have signed on to the single African air transport market, uh, but lack of commitment from member states has affected the implementation process. We'll bring you the latest from Toulouse, hopefully, uh, when my colleague Sandra Fenu uh, joins us. But in studio with me is Sheila Tamaklo, who has been covering the aviation space. Uh, she joins me in the studio. And Sheila, for the benefit of our viewers, tell us a bit more about this single um, Africa air transport market that uh, is subject for discussion at that conference there in Toulouse. Okay, so the single African air transport market is an initiative by the African Union to open up Africa's um, skies. Mm. When we say open up, it means that they are going to lift all forms of restrictions between the various African countries. Hence, um, airlines can fly between the various African countries without any restrictions. You know, you have to go through processes, ask for permission before you're able to go into other jurisdictions. But this time, with this system, you can fly without any limitation on the frequencies, the times, the capacity, the number of passengers that goes into the countries. Yeah. Interesting stuff, but unfortunately there appears to be uh, some problems already with the implementation. Uh, we're hearing about the lack of commitment from African countries. Uh, I don't know if we can establish contact with my colleague uh, Sandra Fenu, who is uh, there in Toulouse for us. If you can hear me, Sandra, what, what are stakeholders there saying about the, the treaty? All right, unfortunately, we don't have Sandra, but I mean, before this, we knew that there have been challenges with this. And maybe, Sheila, you can highlight some of the challenges with uh, the, the treaty as we know it by now. Okay, so the single African air transport market is a follow up to the 1999 Yamusukuro Declaration. Now, the Yamusukuro Declaration also sought to create the liberalized air system, but then, you know, it, the implementation has suffered some setbacks because most of these African countries are afraid of competition. They feel that if you open up the skies, their major airlines may not be able to compete effectively with the foreign airlines that are coming because they are much bigger. But on the other hand, you know, research shows that if we're able to liberalize the air for just 12 African countries, we're going to see about 150,000 jobs being created and mm. 1.3 billion cities being added to the GDP of the African continent. And we're going to see extra passengers that were not flying previously flying. And, and you, you had a conversation with Rafael Cucci yeah. um, about this. Rafael Cucci is the... He's the vice president for the International Air Transport Association. All yeah. right. Uh, can we listen to bits of what uh, Rafael Cucci has had to say about the implementation of this treaty and why there are some uh, challenges currently? Well, the single African air transport market is one of the best things that has happened to Africa yet. And it is going to really see African aviation grow much, much more faster. It is going, it's going to lead to the African continent being more integrated. We're likely to see a growth in intra-Africa trade and an increase in cross-border business uh, across the continent. Now, this is something that uh, it's a follow-up to the Yamosukro decision of 1999. And as you know, Yamosukro decision, which is almost 20 years old, was, was not truly uh, effectively implemented. But there, there were a number of reasons why uh, it was not effectively implemented. Chief among which was the fact that many states feared at the time that their national careers will be competed out of business if they were to open up their markets to other African operators. But today we are seeing that even though they never open up their markets, where are most of the national carriers? Where is Ghana always? Where is Nigeria always? Okay? Where is, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, Zambia always? You know, many of the national carriers, which were big, Air Freak, which was a giant in this region, they all disappeared even though the market was never opened up. The undoing of Africa is actually closing up the market on ourselves. Ghana has no big regional or intercontinental airline, but Ghana is growing its traffic significantly year on year. It is because of Ghana's policy of opening up its market and encouraging operators all over to operate into Ghana. 
All right, so Vice President of Ayata, Rafael Kuchi, there, um, highlighting essentially some of the benefits of this uh, single air transport system. And Sheila, where else is this kind of a system being implemented and how beneficial has it been to them? Okay, so we know that this system actually exists in the European Union. They have been having this for about two decades now. Mm. And what we realize is research shows that about 90% of passengers within this area are able to fly with cheap tickets because the flights are direct. Unlike Ghana here, where, or let's say Africa, you need to move from one African country to the other, yet you're making stops in the Middle East and Europe to get here. So it makes the tickets more expensive. And also because there are more flight frequencies, um, there's competition. When there's increased demand, definitely the prices will also go down. So if we should do the same thing here, we're going to see that there's going to be more you know, frequencies, more airlines, and then prices are going to go down. And there's going to be improved intra-Africa trade as well. Okay, uh, that conference is going to see the launch of a white paper. I'm going to try one more time to see if we can connect with my colleague uh, Sandra Afenu who is covering the conference for us. Sandy, if you can hear me, we are expecting the, uh, the launch of a white paper. Tell us about this white paper. Hello, um, good evening to you. Um, basically, what we've been doing here is about this white paper, obviously, and experts have been saying that Africa is growing largely. And if you talk about the population in terms of people living in Africa, about 16% of the world's population is from Africa. But when it comes to the aviation sector, we only contribute 3% to the global market space, which is not too good. And so this white paper is actually to discuss means and ways that Africa can use to improve on its aviation sector. Issues with taxes on aviation products like aviation oil, uh, we also have ticketing, the taxes that are on it. A lot of the experts have been saying that fed back to the aviation industry in Africa. And so if we want to move forward, definitely we have to look at issues with taxes when it mm. comes to aviation products. Okay. And also, yes, Daryl? Yes. We have just 30 seconds to spare on this. Right. So uh, basically those are some of the issues that we've been talking about. And so it's just to discuss means and ways that Africa can take our in terms of health, uh, also agriculture. The issue of drones came mm. up largely when it comes to air transport. So okay. how do we as Africans take advantage? And the commitment from government as well All is right. key. So at the end of the event tomorrow, definitely they'll come up with a white paper um, to discuss means and ways to leverage the Hopefully, uh, tomorrow we will see you in Toulouse, France. Uh, we're just missing you a little bit here in Accra. Thanks for being with us tonight. Uh, Sandra Fenu, all the way from Toulouse, France. Um, that'll be it for Business Live tonight. There's more news on our website, myjoinline.com forward slash business. My name is Daryl Kwao. Thanks, Sheila. Thanks for watching. Thank you, Daryl.